So how many of you guys would allow your girlfriend to invest for you? What's going on team? It's Ricky with TechBit Solutions. And in this video, I'm actually going to allow my girlfriend to decide where I choose to invest $10,000. And I wanted to put a nice twist to this. So instead of these being companies that I personally see value in or that I enjoy using every single day, I actually chose three companies that my girlfriend I know is a big fan of, and I'm pretty sure <laughs> yours is too. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to jump right into the Webull platform and start breaking them down. Like when it comes down to creating any watch list, you want to make sure that it stays effective. And I actually created a watch list just for her. The first one that we're going to be breaking down is the holy grail of all girls. It's Target, right? Ooh. So TGT. <laughs> You guys could see that on the day chart is super bullish, right? There's three things that I really like to focus on overall direction, consistency, and good deals. And TGT is pretty much all of those. TGT has recently uh, pulled back. TGT is the most consistent out of these three stocks. And I would say it's the, the, the highest quality company. TGT is also the one that I would say is the most conservative, right? So it recently pulled on back and from where we're at right now, if it were to recover, it doesn't offer huge ROI, but it's not bad. It's a little bit over 7% if we were to buy it now and it recovers to previous 180 day highs. But again, the thing that I really like about TGT is how bullish it is, how consistent it is. And because of it, its recent pullback, it provides a decent dip by opportunity where we can buy it right now and then potentially make the recovery, right? So just like any trade, it should be planned out. And what we have here is the ticker callout format. So the ticker symbol is TGT. Support and resistance, what would you say? So right now we're trading right around, what is that, 245, previous highs at 267. So we will say support is at 245 and resistance is going to be at 270. And we can just identify that. So 270 has that resistance. The desired entry point at the end of the day, right? We never want to buy a stock before it actually begins to indicate signs of recovery because it could still continue to sell off. So you see where it's at right now. Mm -hmm. If the stock were to pull on back as of right now, it could go to lows of you know $200. So do we want to buy a stock blindly with $10,000, right? And then and this right is considered a conservative stock because it's above that. What is that one called again? The green one? Moving average. Moving average. Yeah. So this green line right here is the moving average. The blue line is the uh, EMA. So it's the exponential moving average. So gotcha. uh, at the end of the day, the uh, MA or the SMA is a great indicator uh, for overall direction. So we can see that the stock as of right now. So that's great that you pointed that as of right now, the stock is showing signs of it being bullish, making higher highs, higher lows. And at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you put your money in areas that are showing signs of growth. So this yeah. is why I thought that this would be, you know, not only a fun stock that we can talk about, but also a company that, you know, did recently pull on back that provides a decent opportunity. So from the entry point, I would say that we'd have to wait for the break above the EMA line, which is right around 253. So we can set that as 253 and the exit right around that 270 or 267 area. When it comes down to stop loss, we always uh, need to take that into consideration. I'd say if it drops below 240, we have to make sure that we manage and mitigate our risk. Why is it that we see uh, value or potential in TGT is due to its consistent pattern and recent pullback. So that's what I'm going to put on the reason why. And again, it's just uh, good to explain the reason why so anytime that you go back to your plan you can kind of have a better understanding other than just a bunch of numbers on why it is that you originally saw value in, okay the next one that we're going to be breaking down is going to be Pinterest when it comes down to your work right mm -hmm. um, Pinterest is an application that you use very often uh, which is why I thought we would talk about it now Pinterest out of the three stocks is the highest risk but also one of the most rewarding yeah. stocks if it were to make a recovery. So Pinterest recently sold off due to earnings. And would you say it's risky because the two the like, EMA. lines are switching? Um, well, it just it, it shifted direction as you could see from it was trading above the SMA line, it was trading above the EMA line, it reported earnings, and then it acted yeah. as a negative catalyst. And this is okay. one thing like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter um, how good technicals might be. It doesn't matter if we're trading above anything. When there's certain news that is being shared, that, that trumps everything, right? Because that can either act as a positive catalyst where it could have shot Pinterest into, you know, uh, yeah. to new highs and or based off of what it is that they shared, uh, Pinterest peaked during uh, pandemic conditions mm -hmm. and they were, you know, talking about 
their up and coming like future, it's going to be difficult to uh, to be able to like uh, see growth year over year uh, when it comes down to what they experienced in 2020 and uh, early 2021. So that acted as a negative catalyst. Uh, and from where we're at as of right now to previous highs, that would offer a little bit over 40%. Yeah. Now, if it pulls on back, we can't just talk about the upside, right? No. If it pulls on back to previous highs, that would lose potentially 10%. Right. So if it goes according to plan and it makes a, a nice recovery, about 40 percent. Right. If I put in ten thousand dollars, I could potentially make four thousand. That's huge. Yeah. But I could potentially also lose a thousand when it comes down to managing and mitigating risk. So you can see that this one's a little bit different than Target, but it's still attractive. So that'd be what? Is that a four to one or what? Is that's, that that's a four to one ratio. Okay. Yeah. So uh, pins support is going to be right around uh, previous lows, which is right around $50 a share, and then previous highs right around $70 a share. Desired entry point, again, we have to wait for confirmation. That's going to be the break above the EMA line, which is right around yeah. $57, $58. Um, so $58, and then anytime that we get close to the SMA line, I wouldn't that hesitate. Would be considered an exit. That would be like we would it would be considered a critical area where the SMA line used to act as a support level and it can now act as a resistance, resistance. level. So okay. I wouldn't be hesitant to lock in profits there. Okay. Uh, so we'll put it at seventy. But of course, if it continues to hold above and pushes above seventy, uh, then we can just follow with a trailing stop loss. But uh, overall stop loss, we're going to say if it drops below uh, fifty dollars a share, we'll cut losses there. So fifty dollars a share, and then why do you see potential? Uh, it's amazing earnings drop yeah well no uh <laughs> yeah why do you see potential on just using pinterest but uh the last one that i want to talk about is going to be urban outfitters one your of your favorite place i shop at yeah <laughs> your favorite place for sure um so urban out for uh, urban outfitters of course um is a very trendy place but very expensive place and the only thing that i would ever consider buying is actually the stock and it's actually the reported earnings they recently pulled on back, and the thing that I really like about this is that it offers a horizontal pattern. So it's very easy to understand the low points, high points, mm -hmm. low points, high points, low points. Does that happen points. often when it goes horizontal like well, that? It, it happens often for, it's happening often for Pinterest, but no, not for a lot of stocks. Uh, they're not this consistency aspect too, too often, right? And from where we're at right now, if we were to make a full recovery to previous resistance levels, that's about 17%. But if we break below the SMA line, we can manage risk at about 2%, right? So let's go ahead and set up our plan. So this is going to be urban, right? Support is going to be $35 a share. And then resistance is going to be $40 a share, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes down to desired entry, let's say $36. Desired exit, let's say $40. Stop loss, because the support is right around $35, let's say something around $32. We cut losses if it breaks below $32 or $33. Okay. And then why do we see potential? Just based off of recent earnings, it pulled on back. So, How often do earnings come off? Every quarter. Gotcha. Okay. All right. There we go. So the really cool thing about this is um, every quarter, a company releases its earnings. Based off of that quarter and based off of expectation, uh, it's one of my favorite times to trade. Uh, it's one of my favorite time of the year to trade. Yeah. Not that I like holding during earnings, but the stocks that do pull on back, there's companies like Amazon, right, that have recently mm -hmm. pulled on back. But also, not all stocks or companies pull on back during earnings. Some of them actually do, you know, uh, do very well, report very better than expected earnings, and shoot up. Yeah. So those are like I always hear you talk about earnings too. So. Yeah, it's it's. I love focusing on good quality companies and getting them at a good deal. And when they release not as good as expected earnings, they tend to pull on back, which allows people like myself to be able to buy the dip and ride the recovery. Mm -hmm. But all right, so we talked about Urban Outfitters, we talked about Pinterest, and we talked about TGT. We didn't calculate, um, or we did calculate the potential upside, right, for Urban Outfitters. So for Urban Outfitters uh, from previous or from current lows. If it were to make a recovery, that's about 16%. So if I put in $10,000, that would be about $1,600 in potential profit versus you know a 2% downside, which is about $200. So I would say okay. in comparison to the three, we have TGT, which is more of a 2 to 1 ratio where 
It's not the best, but it's also the most conservative. It's the most consistent. Yeah. We have something like uh, Pinterest. That's the highest risk, highest reward. That one's a four to one ratio, which definitely isn't bad, right? Very attractive, but a lot more risky. And then when it comes down to Urban, this one is a 16 to two. So we'll just do an eight to one. Oh, okay. Well, since I don't trade, automatically my mind goes to Target. <laughs> Yeah. Because it's a little bit more conservative. Of course. Um, but since it's not my money, oh. I'm like, let's take a risk. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like I feel like I want to choose Urban Outfitters just because you know, it's already going straight and it's getting ooh, relatively closer to that line. So when it starts to show an uptrend, that's when we would want to do it, right? Yeah. So okay. as of right now, a lot of them are still pulling on back, right? Yeah. Uh, they're still not trading above uh, the EMA line or indicating signs of recovery. But I do have to say, yeah, Pinterest is probably like a, a good in-between. It's yeah. not as conservative as TGT, but it's also not as risky as Pinterest. So it's yeah. a nice in-between. It's a very consistent pattern. And it's the lowest risk in the sense of if I put $10,000 and with that tight of a stop loss right around $33, I really only have about two to $300 yeah. at risk. When I have the potential to make, you know, sixteen hundred dollars. Yeah. And the other ones, the potential to lose is a lot greater, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. On that uh, Pinterest, I would potentially Pinterest, yeah. lose about twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars versus make on this one that much. But on Pinterest, I also have the potential to make four thousand dollars. So high risk, high reward. But I do agree with you. Urban is uh, one of the better. Um, I'd say the better of the three as. It's conservative, but not as conservative as TGT. It at least allows us to. Make the trade a little spicy. Okay, so right. are you ready to 